Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It's not boastful. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not irritable. And does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in truth. It, it bears all things. It believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Amen? We're going to talk from the topic. Love Matters, part two. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Y'all look at Jesus on that. Well, that's a good one. I like that. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, we love you. We're grateful for you. You are so good. And Father, even now, I pray that you would continue to knit our hearts together. Father, we've been praying and worshiping this morning. We've been sharing in fellowship. Now, Father, as we turn our attention to your word, please, Lord, speak to our hearts. Please, Lord, don't let anything interfere with your word going forth. May we be on one accord in the spirit of unity. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. 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 Thank you so much, ushers. Come on in, worshipers. Come on in. Come on in. Wonderful. Here's a big idea for today's message. Love has a look. Love has a look. When you describe something or someone, you'll typically say something like, she looks like so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Or, or we'll say something like, uh, he looks like such and such. Or, or we'll say something like, it, it looks like that. Right, right. You see, these descriptions is, is our attempt at conveying an idea that something has a specific look, a, a resemblance. And y'all know we, we can be a bit brutal when we're describing people. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, she looks like uh, Suzanne from high school, but not as cute. That's what we say. That, that's that's how we describe. Uh, 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 his outfit looks good, but he kind of trying too hard. That's how we do, y'all. We we have that brutality connected with it, but it is a way of helping the person to visualize what it is we're trying to get them to see. And y'all, in the same way, this is my my feeble attempt to describe what I see in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. The Apostle Paul is showing us an even better way, as he states in verse 31 of chapter 12, which is the way of love. Paul is showing us what love looks like. Hmm, God. And, And as he shows us what love looks like. He is reaffirming the fact that love matters. Somebody say love matters. Y'all, love matters. Love, love has, has a look. Now, there, there is no way that we can analyze all that Paul says in verses 4 through 7. Paul gives a total of 14 statements about love. Half of them are positive, half of them are negative. But there's no way we can unpack all that. So so, so what I want us to do is I want us to zero in on what we can take home on today. Amen. You got to remember the church at Corinth was struggling. The church at Corinth was struggling with interpersonals, interpersonal relationships. Y'all, relationships were just not good. You have folks in the church suing each other. Mm. Just look at me. <laughs> you had folks in church fighting with each other. 
accusing each other of all sorts of ungodliness. And the bottom line is they were not loving each other. Now, that's the bottom line. When you peel back all of the drama connected to the church at Corinth, they were simply not loving each other. They figured out a way to push love out and bring the foolishness in. And I think they forgot that Jesus said the world would know us based upon our love for one another. So if we're known by our love for one another, what happened at Corinth? They missed it already. Not even far removed from Jesus actually walking on earth and they're already missing it. These two brothers went to their rabbi, Jewish brothers. They went to the rabbi to settle this this long-standing feud that they had with each other. The rabbi got the two of them to reconcile their differences and to shake hands. And as they were about to leave, the rabbi asked each one of them to make a wish for the other to honor the Jewish New Year. The first brother turned to the other brother and said, I wish you what you wish me. And at that very moment, the second brother threw his hands up and said, see, Rabbi, he's starting up again. Beloved, when when a culture of conflict is inflamed, it's difficult to put it out. Oh, y'all missed that. You got to, let me rewind that. When a culture of conflict is inflamed, it's difficult to put it out. Oh, but don't limit this sermon's application to the church. See, some of us always try to put it on the church. No, you got to take this home. Yeah, I got one amen. That's all right. See, when I'm talking about the church, preach, pastor. Tell them, pastor, when I talk about your life. You got to take it home. For those of you in school, you got to take it to school. For those in the workforce, you got to take it to your jobs. Y'all, Stevie Wonder done told us love's in need of love today. Don't delay. Put yours in right away. Y'all remember that song? That's a good song, y'all. So Paul continues this, this love chapter with these words. Listen carefully. Love is patient. Love is kind. Amen for the phone. Love is patient. Love is kind. Y'all, this is very similar to the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. And it's amazing how you can almost overlay the fruits of the Spirit with this passage on love. I don't, I don't think we need to really go any further than this, this first clause in verse 4. Let's look at it again. Love is patient. Stop right there. See, as Paul paints a picture of love, he personifies. Love. Paul writes of love as a performance. Paul says, love is. And he gives a direct object, patient. Patient, y'all. But why patience, Paul? Why, 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 why are we talking about patience in the context of love? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8, Paul says, instead, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. And you do this to your brothers and sisters. Hmm. Now, how is it that we intentionally do harm to each other? Don't get, don't get so quiet on me, y'all. Keep talking to me. How is it that we intentionally do harm to each other? See, what's happening in 1 Corinthians 6 and 8, this ain't a slip up. It's a jump in. 
You, you, you didn't accidentally do what you did. You intentionally, with malice and intent, did it. So, so Paul is personifying love as patient in direct response to someone doing you dirty. Woo, see, right now you're thinking of all the times you done been done dirty. Amen. Some of y'all say, I ain't got to go back that far either. How do we respond to being done dirty in the church? Woo. Let, me, let me help you. Is it by getting even? Somebody say, yeah. <laughs> Beat them up, pastor. Put that elbow on them. Is it by getting even? Hmm. How about this? Is it by... Telling folks what they did to you. Hmm. Not sure, are we? How about this? Is it by confronting them and ordering them to give you an apology? Oh, God. Oh. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Miss Loretta. I ain't getting no help this morning. Hmm. Let me see here. All right. The word that Paul uses for patience. Oh, God. is the capacity to be wronged and not retaliate. Thank y'all for coming. God bless you. Good night. Leave your offering on the way out. I, I know. Thank y'all for logging in to The Greater Life. I'm going to say it again. This is patient defined. The capacity to be wronged, done dirty and not retaliate. 972-638-9554 is for our street team. Sign up for the street team. If you want to do the phone bank, put a PB. I'm going to say it a third time. Patient. The capacity to be wrong. And not retaliate. Y'all, I can feel the air leaving the room. Some of y'all just, you close your Bible, you put your pen up, turned your phone off, folded your arms. Because you ain't having none of this. You ain't having none of this. Some of you have a clue. Whatever love is patient, I guess I ain't then. Patient, the capacity to be wrong and not retaliate. Pastor Brown, is this even possible? I mean, just come on, it, keep it. Come on, is it even? Is it even plausible? This sounds, Pastor Brown, like some passive aggressive stuff that makes me a doormat for folks to walk all over me. Come on, that's what you. As soon as I said it. You said, this makes me out to be a doormat, and I ain't nobody's doormat. Well, let me tell you something. It is not possible in and of yourself. It is not. But, beloved, this is the uh, conundrum of Christianity. We simply cannot do in and of ourselves what Scripture commands. The only way we can live and experience the Spirit-filled life is to allow the Spirit to control. Which means you got to get out of His way and let the Spirit of God lead you. Woo! Ian Bounds says what the church needs today is not more machinery or even better machinery, not, not new organizations or, or more novel methods, but people whom the Holy Ghost can use, people of prayer, people mighty in prayer. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. Woo. You're trying to do this in and of yourself. That's why you ain't talking to nobody. You ain't got nobody to talk to. 
Because the way you respond to being mistreated is to mistreat. Somebody's getting delivered right now. Y'all, this love letter series has been tearing me up. We struggle and often fail at living life according to scriptures because we try to live it in our own strength, with our own feeble minds and with our limited willpower, but not from God's spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, for all those led by God's spirit are God's son. Galatians 5, 16 says, I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. Love has a look, and the first look for today is patient. To be wronged, to not retaliate. I'm going to keep saying it till you get it. We all have to make up our minds if we truly trust scripture y'all scripture won't let us live any kind of way I need y'all to hear me in fact scripture instructs us to live counter culture and that's where we are today will you be led by the spirit Stephen Brown or will you continually quench grieve the spirit of God will you trust you or will you trust the Lord? Paul says in chapter 8, now about food sacrifice to idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he does not yet know it as he ought to know it. But if anyone loves God, he is known by him. Y'all, this is just a sub point to my first main point. I haven't gotten there yet, but here it is. Here it is. Get, get, get ready to scribble this down. Here it is. Uh, don't be puffy. Oh, God. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this, Gino. Don't, 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 don't be puffy. Do you know why you keep getting in the trouble you getting in? Because you so smart. You got all the answers. And your knowledge has swole your head so big that the spirit of God is like, well, you, you going to do what you going to do then. And because of the puffiness, of your brain, the puffiness of your knowledge. You always right, but you ain't got no relationships. Woo, help me somebody. Y'all, when we operate in what we know, we get puffed up. When we operate in what God knows, we build up. God, look at your neighbor and say, don't be puffy. Now, I ain't say P. Diddy. I say puffy. <laughs> Whew, it's taking us a while, but we're here. Look at our first point. I know 20 minutes in, my first point. Here it is. Uh, he said, love is patient. Get ready to write. Get ready to write. Here it is. You ready? No more tit for tat. Whew, go on, go, go on, go on. You can leave now. That's, that's your thing right there. That's... That's you because you, 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 you the tat right there. That's you, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the last word. I don't care what it is. I, I don't care if y'all texting. Somebody say bye, you say see you later. <laughs> Somebody get on the phone. I'll talk to you. Okay, bye-bye. See you later. You last word on everything. But here's the question I want to ask of the text and of our lives. Listen carefully. How many lives have, have been ruined due to our impatience? The big payback. Retaliating. Winning arguments at all costs. Oh, God. These are the moments when we just had to say something or do something retaliatory. And y'all, quite often relationships have been severed when we offend someone, watch this, and then they pay us back. Mm. 
You see, watch this. We expect folk to be patient with us. Oh, y'all, man. I need a second camera today. I want to walk a little bit. Good God Almighty. Yes, you do. Why she so hard on me? I just, I just made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I ain't perfect. But when they do you wrong, whoo, you come with vengeance times vengeance. When they do you wrong, you, you just let them have it. You call them everything. I'm talking about y'all's relationships. Don't look at your neighbor. Look at me. Again, this is an impossible task in our own strength. Many of us can't even comprehend living in such a God-honoring way. We'd rather keep living as we have for the past multiple decades than to even concede that we've been living in contradiction to God's word. See, we, we begin to justify our behavior. We begin to evaluate our relationships. No, that wasn't me. That was them. Mm-hmm. That one, well, that one may have been me. But the other ones, that, that, was, that was them. <laughs> Let's dig a little deeper. No more tit for tat. That doesn't mean that we don't have hard conversations with the person who offended us. Scripture teaches us in Matthew that biblically we are to go to the person who wronged us. Not their friends, not their cousins, not their spouse, not their children. <sighs> to the person. What's distinct about our passage for today is this. Get ready to scribble this down. It's already on your notes. But y'all, letting folks make it. Come on, y'all, come on. I, I know, I know, I know that goes against everything. I ain't nobody's doormat. I, you, how you are letting folks make it. Letting folks make it. Oh, God, let's take a break. Let's take a five-second break. Come on, just stretch. Just stretch. Just stretch. Come on, just bend down. There's it over. Come on, just. Mm, mm. Oh, I could just feel. Woo. Don't miss the Wednesday morning prayer call, y'all. We're going to hit this again. <clears throat> y'all are aware we have a Wednesday morning prayer call every Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. Go to our website. There's some information about it there. My last point, under this main point, is letting folks make it. When was the last time you let somebody make it? Oh, God, ain't nobody, ain't nobody looking at me. I mean, y'all taking some real good notes today, boy. I ain't lying. I am impressed with y'all note-taking. Like, See, here's what I want you to understand, y'all. The Lord never asked us to be the Holy Spirit in other people's lives. You're not the Holy Spirit. You would gain more traction if you talk to God about people rather than talking to people. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to go. Letting folks, letting folks make it. This is how we show folks what love looks like. If the person never apologizes or acknowledges their actions, love them anyway. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'll take these one, two applause and a hand wave. I'll take it right now. I'll take it. I need a baby crying or something to help me. I'm, I'm all alone up here, boy. If the person never acknowledges or apologizes, love them anyway. Some of us got some work that we got to do starting today. I, I, I know, I know, we're going to talk about it at the end, but you got to start today. There is, there is some, yeah, right now, there are some calls, some texts, some emails, some uh, faxes you need to send today. 
towards restoration and repair. A Baptist pastor during the American Revolution, his name was Peter Miller. He lived in, uh, I think it's called Ephrata, Pennsylvania. And he enjoyed a friendship with George Washington. Also in this community lived Michael Whitman, an evil-minded sort who, who did all he could to oppose and humiliate the pastor. One day, Michael Pittman was arrested for treason and sentenced to die. Peter Miller, the pastor, traveled 70 miles on foot to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to plead for the life of this traitor. No, Peter, said General George Washington, I cannot grant you the life of your friend. My friend, exclaimed Peter, the old preacher, he is the bitterest enemy I've ever had. Washington said, what? You walk 70 miles to save the life of an enemy? He said, that, that puts the matter in a whole different light. I'll, I'll grant your pardon, and I'll release the prisoner. Peter Miller took Michael Whitman back home, no longer an enemy, but a friend. Do you know why the church has so many conflicts? Because no one wants to display patience. No one wants to let folks make it. No one wants to lose based upon what the world says is a loss. But, beloved, our faith calls us to lose, to lose our will, to lose our reputation, to lose our status. What did Paul tell the believers at Philippi? He said, but everything was of gain to me. I have considered a loss because of Christ. We got this thing twisted and backwards and, and we're messing the whole thing up because we want to win in the eyes of the world. No more tit for tat. But the verse is moving. We're almost done. Love is patient. No more tit for tat. Love is kind. Kindness. You know what kindness looks like? No more tit for tat. Love is patient. That's passive. Love is kind. That's active. We got to be both based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's our second principle. Not only no more tit for tat. Secondly and finally, show more grace and tact. I should have been a rapper, y'all. I miss my, bring the beat back. Show more grace and tact. I know y'all are sleeping. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm almost done. Just stay with me. Show more grace and tact. Kindness, beloved, is to display grace towards someone else. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. See, we get hung up on loving others because in our limited minds, they don't deserve our love. They're not worthy of my love. Y'all, if they deserved it, grace wouldn't be necessary. Oh, God. Or have you forgotten what the Lord did for you? But God proved, demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Y'all, that's grace. If love was deserved, we wouldn't need grace. God, look at your neighbor and say grace. grace. Say grace. grace. Oh, let me skip that story. Let me keep going. We got to, y'all, mm, 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 I got too much sermon. Beloved, we are recipients of grace for a reason. We have been gifted with grace, not so that we would keep it for ourselves, but so that we would share it with others. I'm challenging you to show more grace and tact. Two sub points, I'm going to let you go. Here's number one. Give to people like you need to be given. I'm trying to help somebody. 
give to people in the same manner like you need to be given. I'm going to give you the second one so we can go. Secondly, speak to people like you want to hear. Some of y'all know you can't stand when people raise their voice at you. You just lose it. And the first thing is, I, wait, I, I, I'm not a child. And the minute you open your mouth, you go from a negative five to a 25. So you can yell, but they can't yell. Oh, my God. Speak to people like you want to hear. Y'all, this is huge. I'm done. Kindness. Is so about giving. Kindness is about grace. Kindness is about doing for others what they need, regardless of them asking for it, oh God, and regardless of them giving you a thank you note afterwards. Ooh. So we've got to embrace the spirit of generosity, a spirit of giving, a spirit of love. How do we cultivate a heart to give? I'll tell you how. By giving. I'm not talking about your money alone, but your time, your love, your support, showing up for people, being present in people's lives so that you add value to them, so that they know that this is not just lip service. And I guarantee you it is, it is impossible to serve and it be convenient. You'll have to be inconvenienced in order to give a little grace. St. Augustine, the African theologian, said this, he says, where your pleasure is, there is your treasure. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. Where your heart is, there is your happiness. I'm done. I got four more points. I'm going to give them to you Wednesday. Give God a hand of praise. We got to stop. Come on, give God some praise. Come on. I'm going to stop. Because I got 15 more minutes of sermon. But let me stop. I want you to bow right where you are. Bow right where you are. It's so important. And the reason I stop because it is it's a communion Sunday. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, wow, God. Lord, we saw ourselves today. And it was not a pretty sight. Father, we struggle in this area deeply. Father, many of us have lost relationships and friendships both in the family and beyond. And maybe, Lord, for the first time, we are discovering why. So, Father, right now, I'm asking in faith that you touch the hearts of every person under the sound of my voice, on campus, online. And, Father, I pray that you would grant us supernatural power that we would participate in no more tit for tat. Father, help us to embrace letting people make it. And may we find power in that. It's not passive aggression, Lord. It is, it is showing and demonstrating love in such a way that everything doesn't have to be a fight. Everything doesn't have to be a confrontation. We don't have to fall out with everybody to prove that we are right. Lord, help us not to be puffy. And then, Father, I pray that we would really show more grace and tact. Grace in how we treat people, tact in how we talk to people. Lord, that's where the kindness overflows. So last part of my sermon, Lord, had to do with pausing before we speak. Just to give your spirit, Lord, time to, to massage our words and, and to massage our thoughts in the name of Jesus. Father, this is for married folk, husbands and wives. This is for parents and children. This is for co-workers. Lord, this this lesson is for all of us in every area of our lives. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen.
Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 